and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Reanimator. That's right, we are going to be trying to bring back some Agent of Treacheries from the graveyard. So as you all know, um, I've been playing um, a Sultai Treachery deck that I've been really enjoying um, quite a bit where we're just playing more of a value deck uh, with a whole lot of creatures and everything and we just ramp up to Agent of Treachery. Now, this is also a Sultai Treachery deck that we have as a donation deck here. You can see we got all donation decks here today. I guess I didn't put that over here, but still, um, where we're trying to get Agent of Treachery into the graveyard uh, with the help of Chart of Course and Tomb Tome Tomebound Lich. There we go. I'm getting I'm getting there. Tomebound Lich, um, for the most part. Plus Thought Erasure can surveil, and of course Cavalier of Thorns mills over a bunch of cards. So. Those are our main ways to get in the graveyard. Try to get in the graveyard, and then we get it back with Blood for Bones. So we just need to sacrifice a creature, then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. And you put another creature from your graveyard to your hand. So get some really good value with Blood for Bones, as long as it resolves. Of course, you do have to sacrifice your creature. Um, Blood for Bones with Agent of Treachery also just works incredibly well. If you have Agent of Treachery in play, you get to sacrifice the Agent of Treachery to Blood for Bones and then bring it back because the sacrifice is part of the cost of the spell, so that happens first. And then whenever you actually choose your targets, your agent is in the graveyard. So it's a really good combination there. Um, but that's what our deck's all about. And, you know, maybe we get a Yurok in play also, and we get to double up our treacheries and steal our opponent's good stuff and then beat them down with it so pretty cool one we got we got a quasi duplicate over here to be able to copy them we got a journey to eternity which is an awesome card over here on the sideboard this will be more for like whenever our opponents aren't really playing very much removal we can bring this in and so that we know that we're going to be able to like sacrifice our creature um and we don't have to worry too much about that Looks like we got a Nexus over here to keep us from milling out against uh, certain decks, I suppose. Uh, Scholar works really well with Blood for Bones, bringing back Blood for Bones as well. Um, but there we go. Yeah, we played Brawl last night. Um, we played Brawl last night. Oh, that's true. It doesn't target at all. Yeah, so, yeah, so sorry. When I said that... Um, by the time you choose targets but it's not it's not actual targets so but by the time yeah so i was that's not the correct words to say so by the time you choose what creatures to bring back from the graveyard to the battlefield and and from the graveyard to your hand your agent of treachery is in the graveyard but it's not technically targeted because yeah if you did target it wouldn't work all right anyway let's get going with the games so what we like to do with donation decks is we like to play them over in a league, see how they do. So we're going to try to get to five wins and get all this gold. We're going to be stealing all that gold from our opponents with this treacherous agent. Where's that? That's oh, right there. Here we go. <laughs> Nexus was banned in best of one, but not in best of three. So it's still, it's still available in best of three. Uh, probably not going to Ghost Reaper. I'm not a modern player anymore. So I liked the, I liked the Jun deck. That's, that's the one that we played for the most. And uh, I liked it. I liked Sacrifice theme. But they all looked pretty interesting. We didn't get to play against the Knight deck at all. So I didn't I didn't see the Knight deck at all. So that was a little disappointing. So Jeskai. I think, I'm actually just going to ditch land number six. We don't need land number six. Jeskai... With them not playing anything turn one or two, it's likely a control deck where they're going to be killing my creatures anyway. Mm. Guess I 
No, well, we got saved. I should have played Hinchland Harbor so that if we would have hit a blue-black land, uh, we'd still have trips green for Cavalier. So the next turn is the turn they can have Big Teferi. So I was pretty sad on casting Thought Erasure this turn, but we did hit the land, so we could Cavalier Thorn. But if I just go Cavalier Thorn and then they Teferi, that's kind of bad. They Sarkin, it's not as bad, but still kind of bad. So why no modern anymore? Because I I like Arena much, much more than Magic Online. Uh, is a big reason. Um, besides that, uh, I've ever since like Arena's been out, I just had a lot more viewers on Arena as, than on than uh, Magic Online also. And so with this um so like that so you know I, I like you know I like that with this being my job um and then finally you will feel the lick of my your when, end has arrived um when playing a format like modern that's as wide as it is with so many different uh, possible uh, decks and everything like that. Um, you really need to know the format really well. Like you need to know all the decks that your opponents are going to be playing. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so like, like you need to know like like all the cards in your opponent's decks, like all their cards in their sideboard, what what they're going to be doing against you, and everything like that. And it's a really big time commitment and uh, I, I basically just don't want to commit all the time to, to really learn you know everything about modern again and also you know be up on standard and everything like this and um, and I and again so it's, it's so it's like a combination of that and then also like I said with um, why'd they cast the flame sweep I wonder why they cast that flame sweep. And so yeah, so it's it's that, and it's just I would rather be playing arena. Yeah, arena is way better to watch. It's also way more fun to play. Just, I would rather just be playing arena. So um, we're gonna have more formats on arena also, so it's not gonna have to just be all standard all the time. Like we're gonna have brawl and historic here soon, so I'm excited for that. And so we'll be brewing with all, with those formats as well, but And you know, Magic Online's not like free, also. I love a good challenge. This should be fun. So that's another thing. I, I did sell out the ma uh, I did sell the Magic Online collection, and so it'd be so you'd have to go back get the cards. Just all together, not something I'm too interested in. All right, so we're gonna put your rock into play. Oh, well, all right, I guess we're putting Risen Reef into play. <clears throat> that works, too. Risen Reef into play. Your rock back into hand. I battle for the forces of well chosen.
Reverium! Says your channel has been enormous entertainment and education. Thank you. Well, thank you for that huge donation. That was really, really kind. I'm I'm certainly happy to be here, so thank you so much, Reverium. So we, we can't really get rid of Karn. Okay, if I play Risen Reef first, we get two triggers. Then I play your rock and we get four triggers. If I play your rock first, we get two triggers. Then we play Risen Reef and we get four triggers. So I guess it really doesn't matter which way we go. Yeah, my opponent has a bolt, though, so that does change things. Sorry. <laughs> you know, with the, the talking and everything, I I honestly... I just gave them that bolt, but I forgot about it yet. We would have got one extra card if I would have played Risenry first. Action is needed. So it did matter. Anyone who stands in my way is getting sizzled. So we're looking for Agent of Treachery. We haven't seen one yet. Blood for Bones wouldn't be bad either. We got, what, three Blood for Bones left? So we got four Agent of Treachery, three Blood for Bones. Those are the cards we really want to draw. Oh <laughs> no, Reverio. You are, you are great. We, just, we missed out on one card. It'll be okay. Hopefully. Now I'll be okay. There we go. That's a good one. Alright, first order of business. Get rid of these 1-1s. One and kill Chandra. Good luck while I'm gone. Next order of business. Playing this thing. Oh. And we still have seven total Blood for Bones and, and Agent Treacher. We've seen one out of the eight and 35 cards. I'm going to kind of waste this Legion's End. I really want to loot here. I don't want them to be able to chump block. And Tonebound Lich has to hit a player. Uh, it's kind of whatever. You are only hurting yourself. Unreal. This has not been lucky for us. The choices we make reveal who we are. My cause. Can we get one of those seven? There we go. Finally. A curious choice. There's all the agent of treacheries now. We found them all.
So Cavalier of Thorns. Do we have to be worried about milling ourselves out if I take Cavalier of Thorns? I th I kind of think we do. I honestly do think we have to worry about milling ourselves out if I keep Cavalier of Thorns. Honestly, we're going to have to just worry about milling ourselves just in general, though. Because once we take all their planeswalkers, we're still we're going to be drawing a lot of cards with the Agent of Treacheries. Oh, come on! Whoa! They didn't tuck the Karn. They didn't just tuck tuck the Karn. Our actions determine the course of history. Awaken. Hmm. Some lessons for you all. This will aid us. I want to take us, can't I? Hurry! Well, I guess we can take us, can't now? We're just going to mill out, aren't we? So how do I kill my opponent quickly? Evil cannot withstand a righteous army. How do we actually kill our opponent? Hope they have a Jace and steal it. Teferi ult doesn't really win the game for us. I mean, we're definitely Masker Girling. Because we need to get the Agent of Treacheries off the battlefield. No, the two agents in the, down at the bottom now. I, I kind of wish we had that win. Nexus in the main deck. <laughs> we have the one nexus in the sideboard. I kind of wish we had that in the main deck.
Um. Let's take it back. Yeah, I can't really steal stuff. Because if I do, then I have to start drawing three cards at my end step again. <sighs> Come on. I wish I would have seen that right before. I should have done that right before I, I card minus. Alright, I can't really get rid of cards. Either. Okay, we may need that Nexus in the main deck. I honestly don't think I can do enough damage to my opponent right now. How convenient. An excellent choice. I need this. Know what I need. Some solutions must be built. Allow me to introduce you to a friend of mine. <clears throat> Alright, so we only own two of their permanents now. I don't have cards to draw. I can't tick up Jace. I don't have cards. I do need to get rid of this as Kanta, though. We're gonna get one Ascant activation.
cool. I won't hide from the world any longer. We can steal that no and get rid of this other break. one. And we can steal the Ascanta also. Sorry I'm late. Let's try this. Rude. Yeah, they have yeah, they played three as Canta so far. All right, we're gonna activate Ascanta. Reset our library. All right, so there's, so this is four cards. So the next we're gonna look at one, two, three, four. So I need, uh, so I want agent there, agent there, Hinterland Harbor there. All right, and then upkeep as Kanta again. I don't know. I, mean, I guess I guess I should have y'all up here. You have less than 15 minutes already. Man, this would be so easy if we had a Nexus. Is is there. In times of war. It's going pretty good. We are trying to win with these Agent of Treacheries, but my opponent doesn't have good enough threats for us to kill them with, <laughs> unfortunately. Here we go. I wish we had a Jace, yeah. We just had a Jace. Can they play a Jace for me? So next turn, I'll Legion's End the tokens and attack with these things. Could have Legion's End this turn and attacked the Kazmina for two. Which I guess keeps them from doing the whole draw discard. Focus on what matters. That Teferi was their worst card. Yes, thank you. We begin.
Thank you. Something that attacks. Perfect. Not perfect. Not perfect. is lost. I'm not ready for this quite yet. I've got it. So yeah, we got to do that, of course, because we, we can't have three of their permanents, otherwise we lose. I think that's why my opponents had good game. They thought that I was going to have three of their permanents and we would lose. Trust me, I have a plan. We have their Ascanta and their Sarkin. If we have a third permanent, we lose. So I can't, I can't have that Teferi. They're going to be able to tuck this Sarkin now. So I think we're going to be losing this. Might demands power. Yeah, that, that's why like this has been so difficult like this whole time because we couldn't have had a third thing otherwise we lost like this whole time. That's why this game's been so difficult. Because we can't... It's not like a met you may draw three cards. It's just, no, you draw three cards. And so this, this has been a whole lot of... A whole lot of roundabouts playing here. Prep coin. Getting that hype. This is best of three. That's more like it. So I basically have one more game. Let's slow this down. <clears throat> so it's all about if they draw a land here we win we got it set up they get one draw step we have maneuvered this 
Well, we got one draw step. We got five power in play. It's all about this draw right here. It's all about this draw right here. I've got time. Our last card in the library right there. Boom. Even if we lose the match, that was worth it. What a game. So even if we lose the match on time and we don't have time to finish, that was definitely worth it. That was a great game. All right, um, how do we win quickly? So I need this thing, this thing, these, this, those, I don't think I want to like Ashiok my opponent or have Vela Summer or Rivers Rebuke or on Mortigo. I don't think I want any of those cards. So let's see. Thanks, Amalder. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, I got 50 seconds. All right, we can update the score over here. Oops. So number six on the day. Okay. So what are we cutting? Let's cut Cavalier Thorns. The Masker Girl. I don't know. The Masker Girl was actually like really good for us. Like, like at that one point. Like I, I do like Legion's End still in this matchup. I think the Cavalier Thorns kind of mill me out too fast. Get rid of one of those tomb bound tome bound liches. It's not. Yeah, we'll get rid of one of those. Okay, here we go. It's unfortunate having two legions ends in the in our opening hand. That's a card I want to see later on. So I'm I'm probably not going to be paying close attention to. Uh, I'm not going to be playing, paying too close attention to chat here for the rest of the match. Because if we lose this game, like we're not going to have very much time. So, apologize for that. I'm going to try to play a little faster. And just kind of watch the screen here. I want to get rid of my other Legion's End. <laughs> I'm not playing faster. All right, we're just going to get rid of the Quasi Duplicate. Opponent has 16 minutes. Eight and a half minutes.
need one more land, and then we can start agent of treachering stuff. Which we did get the land, but... Their plan's like cleansing Nova. Don't need to extend anymore. Risen Reef. There may have been something a little bit better than Risen Reef. I don't know. I don't think so. Can't get rid of this reassembling skeleton. Can't get rid of the skeleton. Probably the other Cleansing Nova. So I'm going to try to take Planeswalkers with Agent of Treacheries here. So much clicking. We got six and a half minutes. It's not like we can steal all of their land. We can steal some lands. But then I do have to worry about, like, if we do steal lots of lands, then these agents trigger. Like, we're at 26 cards. You know, again, we can... We can die. This deck could really use a Jace or something. The agent of treachery trigger is kind of a problem. We're going to find Nexus eventually, too. You may regret that choice. I'm getting rid of this Risen Reef. Unless they can Clarion it away anyway if they wanted to. But we're getting rid of the Risen Reef. Don't need to draw too many cards. Time has come. 
Ah, oh, dang. Sorry to hear that, Boot. I am not going to sit this one out. There goes nothing. Under my instructions, you will we are the future. Where's Nexus? I can't steal both planeswalkers. Are you certain of your decision? God, I can't even. What am I even doing? Like, how do we even win this? What am I even doing? Yeah, honestly, I can't. I can't steal anything, can I? Yeah, but this still makes you draw all the cards. So if you don't have cards in your library, you still draw them. One Nexus doesn't stop you from drawing tons of cards at your end step. This might be a bad idea. My students are loyal and brilliant. I'm Chandra, the Immolation Sensation. Okay. It's not bad. Because we mill out if we steal. <laughs> we lose the game from milling Bye. if I steal. Alright, so that... That works pretty well. Is it just me? Or is it getting a little warm in here? Chandra Emblem should be able to finish them off. If they would have like emblemed me, I would have like no, stolen Chandra and then just I could have minused all of the loyalty to, to kill another planeswalker also, I could do that too, but All right, well we got there. Yeah, we could we could yeah, we could just Yeah, that's true. We can just play the 2 3 and target our own stuff. Um so we don't steal too many things. But man, yeah, we can't trophy our own stuff. So Yeah, we could target the same thing twice with like the two triggers as far as your rock goes, but those cards that they had weren't valuable to steal, though, also. Man, that was really tough. No, I, I can't re... No, we're in a league, so I can't... I don't want to restart the whole league to add Jace. No. We're, we're just playing our deck in our league. I assume this is easier when your opponent, like, plays things that, that like, kill them. But our opponent didn't have like any cards to steal that killed them, <laughs> so it was, too, it was so hard. Hey, what's up, Ponage Factory? Thank you so much for that support. Yeah, I've got a good look in hand here. We'll go ahead and Thought Erasure. Give us more information before we chart a course. I guess I want the land. Uh, Alright, they're going to kill some stuff. So we know we can ditch the Legion's End. I'm 
I'm going with the Tonebound Lynch. You never know, maybe we get to actually draw two with the Charter Force and not have to discard one. But assuming they just kill the Tonebound Lich and then we don't draw anything, then we're still casting Charter Course. Oh, uh, thanks, Ponage Factory. Well, thank you so much. Glad you're enjoying the content and everything. All right, so we're going to have to double shock. I need to keep the extra green sources for the Cavalier. Yeah, put that in the graveyard. Just draw a card. So even though they should bedevil right now, so I don't get something back, but that's still good for us because of the blood for bones. Man, reassembling skeleton, blood for bones. That's a combo right there. It's like it's we're literally getting blood for for bones. Like literal blood for bones. I'm going to grab the two card advantage engines against the removal deck here. I mean, Cavalier is kind of a card advantage engine, but it just... Um, if they had the instant speed removal, you know, it would just ramp one. But these two are, like, for sure getting us this extra card. Well, auto tap didn't help us out too much. We didn't leave the black mana for reassembling skeleton, unfortunately. Yeah, that's definitely a flavor win, right? Actual blood for bones. How do I feel about this matchup? Uh, first time playing it here, but um, this card is absolutely amazing against Grixis, so I, I feel pretty good about it because we're playing Agent of Treacheries. Um, kind of wish I didn't play the other 1-3. No, I don't I don't think it's good enough value to steal a land. <clears throat> they have such great planeswalkers, you know, I wanna I wanna take Dragon God. Or Chandra. If you haven't heard of me, then get ready to oh, looks like someone's getting a little sweaty. I get an emblem, you get an emblem. Is it just me? We all get emblems. Or is it getting a little warm in here? Skeleton down. Skeleton's not like Squee. We can't cast a skeleton from exile. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Alright, we're at 14 with one emblem. They're at 13 with two. It's the definition of winning.
Everything suits me well. I can always Suffer do better. For your cause. Nicobolus. I will return. Let your weak minds crumble. I don't, I'm not sure what they have in their deck that they want land number eight over Cry of the Carnarium. Assuming it's not their only Cry of the Carnarium, they could have another one. That could have like paired up to kill the agent of treacheries. Stealing agent or st stealing Nicol Bolas is a four for one off the bat because yeah, I mean, so we we take their Nicol Bolas, we draw a card, and they exile a card. So it's a, it's just a three for one My off the bat. Schemes are never ending. Unless, he, if, unless we think of remove their Nicol Bolas as one and then also play our own Nicol Bolas as two, which would make sense. That would make sense. Well, the agent is the one. You know, like when you say four for one, it's the agent is the one. But yeah, so yeah, we remove their Nicol Bolas, we play Nicol Bolas, we draw a card, they exile a card. This is much more of a Veil of Summer matchup than against Little Teferi. Alright, so we get Scholar of Ages, we'll just play this Nexus, I guess. I don't know if we really need that Nexus. Okay, so all of these are reasonable. We got we can't play four of these cards. We could not play the trophies. We could not play this Yurok. We could not play the Duress, considering the games go longer, and then discard spells just get stuck in your hand. I'm fine with not playing Duress. Um... And then we'll trim a Lich and trim a Yurok, Cavalier, not play the Nexus, Trophy. All right, here we go. Yeah, Agent of Treachery with the party bus. Get Bant Treachery, so yeah, we, that could definitely be fun. Yeah, whatever the math boils down to, it's definitely disgusting stealing Nickel Bolas. Alright, so I'm just going to give them the heads up that I have Veil of Summer. Because Cryptic Command is just too powerful. But even if you tell your opponent you have Cryptic Command... It's still just too powerful to let them steal your cryptic command for one mana. Does Legion's End even hit anything in my deck? The reassembling skeleton? Bank. 
Wow. You're fine. My victory. Talk about rude. Talk about rude. Already struggle with winning before we run out of cards. Now they just have 20 cards gone and we're only playing a 40 card deck. This is going to be a lot more difficult. Need these land drops. This is my, my victory has brought a So it turns out Ashiok is really good against me. Turns out. And it's, it's not even so much about the reanimator part. It's really about the, I need 60 cards to kill my opponent before I die, or like before I mill out. Oh, right, the sound bug was going. Yeah, somebody told me about that a few matches ago, and I forgot. Or no, because we did reset after that. So, okay, so it must be new now. From what it from what it seems like... Yeah, so thanks. Help remind me whenever we get, you know, like, after the match. Whenever the match is ending, and remember you're on a little bit of delay, help remind me again before I start a new match. Yeah. I feel like it, it happens whenever, like, I, I went under the 30-second timer for sideboarding, and whenever you go under that time, then that's when the sound bug happens. So it's like, now I have, like, 30 seconds less of sideboarding. The devil animation. It doesn't bother me, of course, because I, I can't hear it at all, but I'm sure it's bothering y'all, so y'all have to just remind me because I'll forget about it. I could have six mana Chandra. Ritual set. Thankfully, they had this dead Legion's End in their hand the whole time. I think we got this one. That's a good draw. 
finding our last agent in treachery was pretty fortunate for us. We only had like one card left in the deck to deal with that nickel bolus. Right, because our trophy was gone. No, I guess I guess we still had a trophy. So we had two cards in the deck to deal with that nickel bolus. Get out of my way. So we were pretty lucky to, to find one. I've always wanted to make a really big fireball. All right. All right, well, we were just talking about the reset, so I'll do that for y'all real quick here. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the fast forward 15 seconds button or 30 seconds button. Driving home from an ice cream run trying to save a chihuahua that was walking around near death from dehydration and hunger. Oh, man. Hopefully you can. Maybe take the... Chihuahua to like a shelter. Yeah, good man, Matt. Good man. <clears throat> All right, two and oh. Had some close ones. You're welcome, Crop. Yeah, I'm always I'm always happy to to reset if that sounds there. Just you gotta let me know. Always happy. To get rid of that for y'all. Leafkin, Leafkin, Omnath. What great value. We keep on milling over reassemb reassembling skeleton. We did, like, with the Cavalier of Thorns once, we've done it twice with Surveil Triggers. I guess I don't have another green source right now. Maybe I should put that in the graveyard. Uh, Risen Reef can hit a green source here. That was a great draw. It'd be ashamed if somebody stole that Cavalier Thorn. No, that's not a green source. But I like seeing that we got rid of two Risen Reefs. All right, come on deck, green source. Green source. I think fleas are pretty small. can't use this land anyway. We'll just put the breeding pool in the play tapped. It's, it's, I don't I don't know if there's any real difference in getting breeding pool or Hinterland Harbor. I guess there's not, but Hinterland Harbor would have been untapped, but we couldn't use it anyway. All right, did we get anything? Nothing. Nothing for blood for bones yet. Adonis climb. That's game. Oh wait, no. I have I have the I have a, a blocker. Cavalier can block. So they didn't activate, so I could just chomp with Risen Reef for a turn. I'm going to do that since they didn't activate. So 
So now we have two jump blockers. There's an agent of treachery. We're gonna need agent treachery to take the winged temple of Arazka. Yeah, nailed it. The winged temple of Arazka. So it's three and a tap. Target creature you control gains flying and plus X plus X where X is its power. So they can make these Cavalier Thorns 10, 11 flyers. They can make the Incubation Druid an eight. Chandra, an eight, 10 flyer. That's not good. Massacre Girl doesn't work here. Because they can pump the Leafkin Druid. And then it would just kill my two Risen Reefs. Yoink. Thank you. Wow, I thought we were dead whenever they played the Winged Temple of Araska. But we weren't. We suddenly weren't dead. We had the creature that had reach. I don't think I want to kill the Cavalier Thorns. Let them get that stuff back if I want to play Masker Girl. I think I'm just going to try to find more Agent of Treacheries and steal their... steal more of their stuff. I just need to steal the two Cavaliers and then we can kill them in the air. And of course we have we have one steel card with with the blood for bones. Let's go dig in. Hey, there's another one. Um one, two, three, four, five. I didn't play a land this turn, did I? How many cards in library? 26? Ugh. So I could go Yurok. But that's six triggers. Jeez. And then, because if I do that, and then we go Blood for Bones, put Agent back into play, steal both our Cavaliers, then I get... I go through 12 cards. It's kind of rough. Let's start by taking this thing. Harness the elements.
I'm not sure if I have enough mana to do exactly what I want to do. <clears throat> 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Don't know if that's enough mana. I need 5 to cast that, 4 to cast this, that's 9. I need 4 to activate that, which is 13. And I need 4 to activate this again, which is 17. How much mana did I say I had? I need 17. 2, 4, 6, 8... <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Dang, I do have 17. Oh, man. All right, well, let's let's give this a try then. Uh, oh, gosh. Arena's being so slow. Oh, there's no way this works before I get timed out. Just, why do you have to click OK on every single card? I don't care what I'm drawing. This game's over. We have lethal right now if it actually lets me. Here, let's, let's just activate this right now. Okay. Before it taps that land or something. We did it. 20 power in the air. Steal their flyers. <sighs> Dead. GG. All right, we did it. <laughs> that was really cool. The old 2021 in the air. Okay. What do we want to do sideboard wise here? <laughs> that moment when you use Hadana's Climb better than the deck it was originally in. I know, right? They didn't use their Hadana's Climb very effectively, so I had to, I had to show them how to use their card. Okay. Um, I mean, we don't really need Legion's End, I guess. Let's play River's Rebuke, Nexus, Scholar, Quasi-Duplicate. Let's just try those. I don't know if this will work or not. We'll see. Yeah, for the deck list, just exclamation point deck. There's the deck list right there. And there, yeah, you can see all the decks. They're on that stream decker link as well. <laughs> the absolute board state and just one creature attacking. Absolute power move. Ooh. I think on the play at Mulligan, on the draw, it's more likely to hit land drops. Really need one land drop. Get the Thought Razor going. That Surveil. Then we got Risen Reef. Like, we're looking okay. Looks like opponent may have Veil of Summer, though. They just play, like, two mana ramp card here. Okay, no, they were just playing Risen Reef. All right, land. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Hmm. Whiff, whiff.
Whoa, crazy support! Wow. Crazy support is showing just that. Thank you so much for gifting out those subs. You are amazing. Thanks, crazy support. And everybody got their hype votes in the chat, too. So much hype in this chat right now. Y'all are awesome. So we got 10 new subscribers. It's going to bump our sub goal up to... So we hit a sub goal. There, just with that. So... Um... I guess I let them counter or not. I don't have to. So ZXY, Intruder, Doctor, 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 Renzin, Sanguine, Nano Flare, Anaphylactic, Chicken Wings, Kelthalos, and Seal, all getting those subs. And Star White as well. Man, I've never seen this much hype here in the channel. This is amazing. <laughs> it's all good, eyes it up. You were, you were great. They just didn't play anything. So they they really want to hold up. They really want to hold up this disdainful stroke. I think I let them, I guess I let them Disdainful Stroke a Cavalier. Milling 5 it really isn't even that great for me anyway. Well, that's not a good trade. Aw, uh, thanks Crazy Support. It says thanks for the great content. Well, thank you. Alright, now they get to ramp. Which can be a problem with them having infinite cards in hand. So do we want to just rebuke? Or do we want to steal something first? Probably steal this Cavalier Thorns. Ugh. Does that mean another counter spell? Probably means another counter spell. Yeah, that's definitely another counter spell. Yeah, Eisen F gifted the sub to Star White there. I mean, are we just dead with this Nexus of Fate? Maybe. Those disdainful strokes were pretty big game. Alright, so do I need 
Do I need to play Veil of Summer against some Disdainful Strokes? I'm taking this River's Rebuke back out. The card always just looks... Always looks bad. Yeah, that's lethal. This land, we are all all right, definitely want the Duresses. That's what I want. Let's get that card out. Let's get these Duresses to help uh, counter their... No, Masker Roll can be good. Yeah, definitely want these duresses. I I think that's better than Veil of Summer. Where we can we can go try to take Disdainful Stroke and stuff. Um Hmm. Alright, here we go. Yeah, we have one Nexus in here. We've never drawn it. No. I'm, I'm, they have, like, millions of targets for Unmoored Ego. It's, that's not going to be worth it. There's not, like, any... Like, you only play Unmoored Ego whenever there's one... Like, when there's... One card that's really devastating that you have to take from your opponent's deck, and it it cripples their deck when they don't have it. There's there's not a there's not a card like that because like, what are you supposed to take? Like Nexus. I mean, they still have all the you know they still have Omnath and Risen Reef and Krasis and Nissa. Like there's like that's just tons of cards. Taking any one of those doesn't necessarily help you out. What are they doing keeping this hand a forest forest? They have like Risen Reefs and Vela Summers. Hmm. Why would it tap both of my green sources? I guess I wasn't really looking at that. I was thinking about what, what's a discard. They definitely have Veil of Summer. Wow. That's aggressive. I gotta wait till they tap out first because of Veil of Summer. Which they have to tap out at some point, you would think. If not, I'm just gonna be killing them. So I'm not gonna be blood. I'm not gonna use blood for bones for agent of treachery. Right now. But we can. Just get ridiculous amounts of Risen Reef value, and they, they are just dead. Does not look like they're supposed to be keeping that hand on the play. Quasi Dupla Reef. I'll 
fire this off. I'll let them cast their Veil of Summer before this game ends. There you go. You can cycle your Veil of Summer. Because if for some reason they didn't have one... Like, what's their plan? I don't know what their plan is. Like, they're, they haven't conceded yet. They're, they're, they conceded. Alright, we're 3 0. 3 0, Sultai Reanimator. And they appear to be at a bit of a mana disadvantage could impact the ability to play future turns. Posted pictures of, of the puppers in the Discord. Little Chihuahua. Why can't we have one more land? Uh, we can't keep though. Man, one more land. We're so golden. But on the play, like where we have to have a land for the next draw step or we lose the game, it's just not worth it. So keeping real, real, uh, reassembling skeleton would allow us to discard it to chart a course, and get you know a card in the graveyard that we get to put back into place. So, you know, it's basically like drawing that extra card. Um, Masker girl, of course, requires two black mana to cast, and it requires our opponent to be playing creatures that die to Masker girl. So that was why I kind of wanted to get rid of her, but. Uh, I think that the 1-1, one, one, the reassembling skeleton is, even though it's like that extra card, it's still just a 1-1, one, one, which isn't really that valuable. So I just went ahead and got rid of reassembling skeleton because there, there, there's a chance that like Masker Girl could, you know, be incredibly impactful depending on what our opponent plays. There's not really that chance that skeleton has. So even though skeleton has a higher floor than Masker Girl, we're going with the card with the really high ceiling. And with them playing at turn one forest, that is a good Masker Girl land to see. Speaking of land, we're going to need more of those. There we go. Um... I kind of want all these cards. I guess we don't get two Legion's Ends. I'll just take I'll just get rid of the Cavalier Thorns. Mm -hmm. Man, I'd love to mask or girl away these creatures. I guess I should have Get, yeah, I guess I should have got rid of uh, Legion's End.
Just watched two minutes of the CSGO tournament. There's 2,000 people Shelter streaming something that slow. Is it slow? I don't know anything about CSGO. Rise, my elemental I couldn't even tell you what that stands for. Anyway, Orsian, hello. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we we play lots of different fun brews here on the channel. Um, we got four donation decks here. The Sultai Reanimator that we're playing, we are doing well with. Currently. I guess it's worth it to put Risen Reef back in our hand to take Nissa. I guess. I don't really want to tick up on a land I control, though. I don't want my lands to die. Of the you walk on. Counter Strike Global Offensive. Wow, Deputy is a great card. Takes Nissa right back. I must go. So if I kill Deputy, they get Nissa back. That's a great card right there. Still worth it though. Strange and magnificent world. Yeah, whenever whenever a card's from exile and it goes back into play, it goes all, it always goes back under the owner's control. Whenever there's a card in exile that comes back into play, so it it would always go back into the the original Behold, owner's not. So uh, that's how that always works. Play the Cavalier that ramps us. Fun fact, the Exile Zone is shared among all players. I don't think I've ever heard that before. I, I certainly believe it, but yeah, I've never heard that. But it makes sense. That is a fun fact. <laughs> Massacre, Girl, Massacre Girl is a menace. True. Be wary of the ground you walk on. You want to trade a land for three life? Okay, it does not want to trade a land for three life. You got a hallowed fountain in hand. Hey, Moxie. I have a backup Nissa. Moxie. Welcome to the channel. Now you get to use your emotes. Yeah, I've never understood why Masker Girl is legendary either. I don't know. Maybe because there's tales about all of her massacre stuff. And no, maybe nobody knows her, her name. Because you would think that legendary would be, you know, like somebody Masker Girl. Or something like a like 
Legends usually have a name. Legendary creatures and planeswalkers. Rise, they have names. Friend. That's her title? I will aid you. Yeah, just <clears throat> referenced by that and some flavor of old cards. So yeah, that that makes sense. Like that's that's like her. It's like the legend of Masker Girl. Nobody knows Masker Girl's true identity. They just don't have any lands left. How are they supposed to win? They don't have any lands. They don't have any cards in hand. They're gonna have like no permanence next turn. I'm just gonna sack the Tone Bound Lich, grab Agent of Treachery, take the Breeding Pool. Is there anything we want to do here? We just play this Nexus to kind of have in our deck. Do you like the quasi duplicate? Maybe we don't need the skeleton. No, never taking out the skeleton. The skeleton's good. So, Masker Girl is an, anon an anonymous serial killer that's mentioned in the flavor text of Thrill Kill Assassin and probably other cards as well. He said, I feel like uh, crap, I need to cut something. Um, i trim on Cavalier of the Thorns. No! Hopefully we don't get the sound bug. I tried to hit submit before that happened. Somebody says, I feel like Journey to Eternity looks a lot better than it actually is. Well, that's true because it looks so good. <laughs> I mean, Journey to, Journey to Eternity is like... 10 out of 10 of how it looks, so it's, it's hard for it to actually be that good. Massacre Girl is only connected to 43 known murders. That's still... Yeah, I think that's good enough for the Massacre Girl name. I think that's enough to deserve the Massacre Girl title. Just taking the two for one. I know later on in the game we'd be able to clear those out with Masker Girl, but we're just taking the two for one for now.
Bounce Paradise Druid. Show remorse. I'll no. show. I've got time. Bounce Risen Reef. this yes the the sub is for one month moxie the gifted sub is so you got one month to use as many hype boats as you can I think I don't really want to cast the other charter course yet I'm just gonna wait I've done the hero thing before. Doubtful. All right, time to start putting millions of lands into play. Play that again next turn. I know my responsibility. Don't worry, I got this. We got so many cards. So my plan here is to go Cavalier Thorns, hit a land drop, and then play Risen Reef, because I can't Risen Reef. You know, I have seven mana, so I can't go Risen Reef plus a five drop. But if I lead with Cavalier of Thorns <clears throat> and hit an untapped land, then we can. Alright, we're doing good. We still got seven cards in hand. <laughs> so much value. These elemental creatures are pretty busted. But they're fun to play. I mean, I like them. I'm all about creatures with awesome ETB effects. If there's no more creatures in play, we could technically play Mask... We could technically play Masker Girl right here and not kill a Cavalier of Thorn. Trust and just trade Risen play. Reef for their Risen Reef plus two mana creatures. Together we will prevail. Alright, well now Cavalier of Thorn would die. The land shall conquer you. No surprise there. Don't know if it's worth it to pay two life to cast Charter Course. Yeah, might as well. I 
Still haven't seen any Agent of Treacheries yet. Halfway through the deck. Harness the elements. Crisis. This is whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a, a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger. So Masquerade would trigger two times immediately and then one after that. So it'd be two and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Masquerade would have eight triggers right now as far as killing a large Krasis goes. this up as I go. Hmm. Just no agent agent of treacheries. It's pretty likely that they have another Veil of Summer though. They do not. A voracious Hydra? Extra Nissa. We have a lot of good stuff. There's an agent of treachery. There's all the agent of treacheries. I want to shuffle any of these back into my deck. I think I want to shuffle an agent back into the deck. Oh, it just stays on top. Oh, right, we're not we're not doing any shuffling. So taking crisis, they get to get their they get to get their crisis back with a lot of a lot of different ways. Um. If I take Krasis. Yeah, I guess I don't have double blue for quasi-duplicate because we have the Woodland Cemetery as our last card. So I don't get to quasi-duplicate, unfortunately. I could bounce, like, I was kind of like planning it. on bouncing Agent at Treachery. But honestly...
Yeah, I was kind of planning on bouncing Agent of Treachery, but honestly, I don't I don't really want like I'm at 12. I really don't want to take that hit from the Krasis. You know, like they can just get rid of my Cavalier Thorns and like I guess kind of kill me. So we kind of have to do that to stay alive. Yeah, Tristani only gets gets back creatures. Because, yeah, they, they could have just Voracious Hydra or Teferi get rid of my Cavalier Thorns and, like, kill me with the Krasis. We had to get rid of the Krasis. If I if I steal the Krasis, they just play their own Teferi and bounce it. They uh, Or they just play the Tristani and get it back. I would probably bounce the Krasis if, if I were them. But getting So getting rid of that Teferi so they don't get that extra bounce is worthwhile for sure. Probably shouldn't have ticked up. Thank you. Here goes nothing. All right, so now we get a Masker Girl away. Nothing. Oh, everything. Yeah, because we get reassembling skeleton. Stop! Stop auto passing. Gotta get the skeleton back in here. I didn't add that thing for mana. I guess it was too late. Kind of want to just put my quasi duplicate back. Get it back so I can cast it twice. Yeah, I'm gonna be stealing a couple lands. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Which I guess the uh, <clears throat> breeding pools are the most valuable. I could just go after white sources, but the breeding pools are the most valuable because of Nissa's. Sweet. Victory. Man, this is a really long league. <laughs> Buckle under my blade. Just look at the time. Alright, but we're 4 0. GG's. Yeah, Dragon Lord, the reason why you can't find the the twins in the spoilers is because they haven't been officially previewed. That was a, um, that was a leak that showed that picture. So that's why they haven't been, that's why they're not in like other places, like official places. I don't know if sound bug was reset. I have no idea. All right, yeah, Candice, that, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how far the thanks, thanks for being accommodating. We'll see how long the Rakdos burn takes and everything. If, if Rak, yeah, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do Just Guy Hero tomorrow. Depending. Hey, Big Slider, thank you so much. Because if we get to burn people pretty quickly, then uh, we should. Then we could be fine. 
Oh, and that's our 20th sub of the day, our second sub goal. I need to mark those down towards our next 12-hour stream. Island. I wish I would have kept Agent of Treachery instead of Legion's End. But I guess Legion's End can get rid of the lands that Nyssa makes. <clears throat> so the sub-goals, I do, I do a 12-hour stream every 20 sub-goals. So if we get a sub-goal a day, I do a 12-hour stream you know, every 20 days. However, sometimes we get more sub-goals. Like today we hit two, so that, that helps it get there even faster. So far, after yesterday and today, we've hit, we're at eight sub goals now. Towards the next twelve-hour stream, I just updated that. All right, Masker Girl's gonna go. Never mind, Agent goes. <clears throat> I feel like Tonebound Lich uh, digs us a little faster than Risen Reef in this scenario. Oh gosh, Tamio is Let just like the perfect card for me. Hmm. Can I, I, know, I know can I get that Tamio, please? We need to find a land here. Love it. Agent of Treachery in play. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to put your rock in hand. I guess so. The storied past. Holds our future. We're probably supposed to leave the Yurok in the graveyard. They only have one green land. That's not very many green lands. Whoa, they just scooped it up. Just picked up the cards. Just picked them up. How about that? We'll have our own Nexus, some Duress, some Trophy, an Ego, uh, the Scholar. Quasi duplicate Veil of Summer. Legion's End, Skeleton, Masker Girl. Cavalier. Mm. Hmm. Two veil, because their their bounce spells, like really save save the opponent a lot of time. And veil summoning their bounce spells is honestly pretty nice. So you saw like that that time how they bounced like the Tamio back to their hand. Like that's like they're gonna have, you know, like three or four bounce spells they're gonna be digging towards, and and like the bounce spells are important. And yeah, honestly, they may have negates here after sideboarding too. Maybe I should keep this other one in. I'm like, maybe I don't play Scholar. Don't play Tonebound Lynch. I don't 
Oh no, it's got... No, I think the trophies are really important in this matchup. We've got to kill Reclamation and Escanta. Yeah, I was planning on making a rotation proof reanimator deck for Monday. Um, I'm not, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what it'll look like. But yeah, so basically I am planning on making a rotation proof reanimator deck. The, like, one of the big cards that we're losing, of course, is Chart of Course. That's a. That's a tough one. Yeah, with with the rotation proof decks, if you want to update my if you want to upgrade my rotation proof decks, you can you can you can put them in the correct lands and upgrade them cuz yeah, they are it is tough playing them without the the lands for sure. So of course, we need to wait a turn before we ego. We need to have ego with Veil of Summer, but they honestly may have like their own Veil of Summer though. Which I guess I don't stop. Should I should I just Risen Reef? And see if they like tap out or come close to tapping out? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Darn it. That was the worst case scenario, but that does keep them from casting like a Chemist's Insight this turn if that was their plan to Chemist's Insight. But I guess maybe that wasn't their plan, they just have a million ops. That's unfortunate. No, those were the lands right there. I wanted to put lands into play. Oh, I should have done Risen Reef first. We would have been, we would have put two lands into play. Uh, now we're gonna get the two spells to our hand. Okay, good. At least we hit one land. All right, looks like they did have cameras inside. It's a pretty awesome hand. We could just lose. You know, like they can just drop reclamation and kill us. Thanks, crazy sport. Yeah, this is our final boss playlist. So we are 4-0, oh, so we're on our final boss. Which means we do have the extra life, so if we do lose this, we get another match. Well, we know there is going to be Gilded Goose to replace Llanowar Elf. We'll see how reliable getting food tokens into play are or is for Gilded Goose. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Rise, my element. Yeah, this could be game still. Reclamation, then Nexus. Hopefully not. Hopefully just pass turn. Yay. We not dead yet. Yet being the operative word. Crap. 
crisis. Would I rather than have a nexus or a crisis? I guess I can just take both of them, but then I don't get to play anything else. And I have to take Krasis. I was kind of planning on casting Blood for Bones here, though, and get putting your rock into play. But I guess I need to take Nexus. Do I? Do I need to take Nexus? I mean, they get to ultimate Nyssa. Is that even a problem? Not really. Where is the treacherous agent? Yeah, would not. I mean, our, our opponent has to hit pretty well to kill us here, but it's certainly a possibility between yeah, double opt insight, and then also this memorial of genius and the amount of mana they have. They keep scrying to the top, also both both cards they scry to the top. So that's a really bad sign to us. They like automatically scry to the top. Sound bug again. The land shall come Hopefully they fix that thing. If we win this this match, you know we're just we're gonna be resetting anyway because we'll be changing decks. But. Interplanar bacon is a rare, isn't it? Or is it? Oh, is it uncommon? Oh, never mind. That was a rare. So casting crisis, please whiff. Drew two cards off crisis, two cards for, or one card for turn. That's a good sign. Come on, whiff. No more. No more nexus. Yeah, no, Kar yeah, Karn's Bastion, Blast Zone, those are rares. <clears throat> okay, so the bacon, bacon bits is an uncommon. Alright, so we got nine mana. I can't do anything really that special here. Definitely love hitting lands. It's either Quasi Duplicate plus Thought Erasure or Cavalier Thorns. One mana short from this nexus. I guess going Cavalier Thorns. Means we can do more stuff. Because Cavalier Thorns puts lands into play untapped.
We have duress. Ugh. I realized we had duress right after I said don't pay two life. I should have paid two life. Yeah, and Veil of Summer. Should have paid two life. We're down to 17 cards. We could potentially out Nexus the Nexus deck if they don't find more Nexuses. Potentially. So I feel like I should keep in some Legion's Ends. Getting two Krasis here. Did not whiff, fortunately. That's game. Well, yeah, that's game. The land for us. Hey, what's up, Angry Ben? Thanks for the resub. Okay. What do we want to change, if anything? Like, do we want Legion's End? Do we actually want Legion's End? Hmm. No, I'm going to keep it the same, and I think I'd still want all three Veil of Summers. We didn't see any bounce spells, but we did see counter magic. I was too aggressive with the Unmoored Ego. I believe I should have waited on that card. I think that last game should just continue to play Risen Reefs. So we know they have Veil of Summer. Come on, deck. Why is it every time you keep the five lander, the first two cards are lands? Bleh. Not a great spell. Maybe find another Risen Reef, hopefully. Or a quasi duplicate. Those 
cannot keep an open mind. Not good. Just wait a moment. Only drawing lands in our most expensive cards. Not good. I have just the trick for this. We are pretty big underdogs right now. We can cycle Veil of Summer. There we go, that's a good draw. But I think the card's more valuable than a cycle. Sir Fubbis. Clear out all these lands on top. Double blood for bones, no. And then we get a spell. No. Nope. Agent of Treachery is more valuable in my hand than in my graveyard. The question is why didn't I just chart a course first and then discard Agent of Treachery? We can look at all, the, like, we can cast Agent of Treachery. It's more valuable in my hand. My graveyard, I don't, it doesn't do anything. Our only reanimation spell, we can just sacrifice it after we cast it. Also. I don't really see how we win this, to be honest. We definitely don't win this. Veil of Summer is really hard for me to be. It's not like I can play like discard to stop Veil of Summer. That's game. That was already game. Well, I already know my opponent has at least one Veil of Summer for how the game was playing earlier. So I can't, so like my first agent, my first agent of treachery doesn't actually steal anything. So this game's over. Um, it's really the second game. I, I feel like I could have sequenced the second game better. I turned four when I went Unmoored Ego with Veil of Summer back up. I really think that I should have just played Risen Reef and just continue to ramp and just see if there is, and just, you know, I know they never tapped out, but I think that maybe we could have got the Unmoored Ego in later, and I should have just tried to be faster on the battlefield there instead of taking turn four off like that. I was thinking that maybe I was shutting down a Chemist's Insight turn, but then they still had double opt to cast. Afterwards, all right, this, this is over. We have a whole nother game to do, and our deck's really slow. Let's let's stop this. Yeah, the game's over. Okay, is there is there a sound bug that I need to reset, or do we, or are we good? Y'all have to help me out here. I'm waiting on y'all.
Do I need to reset because of a sound bug that's bothering everybody? Or not? Or is there no sound bug? There is a sound bug. Yes, there is a sound bug. There's a hiss. Okay. All right, we'll reset then. Again, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, just click that 30 second fast forward button. Okay, we'll get us another life. We'll get an extra life. <clears throat> so nothing we could have done that third game, but I feel like the second game I could have sideboarded it or sequenced it better. But we'll see. But anyway, new match now. Blood Crypt? We haven't seen Blood Crypts in this league. It's just been all breeding pools the whole time. Oh wait, we did face a Grixis deck. Never mind. This is our second Grixis deck. Well, glad we have the double Legion's End. Glad we got the five card hand. So I think we're I think we'll win games two and three, but this is just an absolute perfect start for them. With me having two dead cards in my hand, Keep an open mind. So the good, that's the good part about playing control decks is sometimes, uh, sometimes you line it up and your opponent draws, you know, game one removal, that's just dead. You know, so like we we're on a five card hand here the advantage that you can have game one. So perfect hand for them. Horrific hand for us. We are moving on. Okay, let's take out all those cards that we drew. I don't actually need Nexus. Oh, I need. I should be playing this against the, the Grixis deck. Right. All right. Well, if we're playing uh, Vela Summers, then we are not playing. The Skeleton? I don't know. The Skeleton's good with Blood for Bones, though. I think I didn't play Duress against them last time. Yeah, I think I did not play Duress. Like the Yurok? The reason why I don't want Duress is because I believe that our game is going to go long. 
and that that like our especially like Grixis is the ki- type of deck that plays a lot of spells that trade, and so like if we're if if our cards are all trading and we get to the, towards the late game where we're in top deck mode, top decking duress is a dead card, and so that's why I'm not playing it over anything else. Um, duress is not a bad card in this matchup because it can take you know expensive planeswalker. Um, if I had if I had cards if I had more removal in my deck that I wanted to cut, then I would be playing. All right, they didn't have discard last turn. If if we had more removal that I really wanted to cut, I'd be playing. Um, <clears throat> I'd be playing duress, but we just don't really have more things to cut. We already have the fourth thought erasure, so it's like, do we really need six discard spells? That, that seems like that's a lot, and that seems like if I'm playing six dis- discard spells, they're playing all their discard spells, like we're going to get into a top deck war, and then if you top deck discard stuff later on, it's not too beneficial to you. So Scholar does put Blood for Bones back into my hand. Same with Charter Course. Or Cavalier gets to block. I'll go with Cavalier. Alright, we can just put Scholar back into our hand. Kind of forgot about that part of Blood for Bones for a second there. Dress is dress is still really good against combo decks though, so it's not like um, it's not like we don't need duress at all. It's still very good against combo, but just against against hard control like this. And and for example, like we're playing Veil of Summer in this matchup, but against like Esper against like Teferi control decks, I'd rather have duress than than Veil of Summer against Teferi control decks. Okay, what are we doing? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, give me this. Reassembling skeleton MVP. Nicol Bolas on uh, Nicol Bolas hate crime there. I will return. More lands. More cards in the graveyard. Give me blood for bones back. That's so nice of you. 
GG's. All right. <clears throat> Deck looked a lot better there post board when he got to cut the nonsense for regular sense. Can we get game three on the draw? Game three on the draw. Yeah, I think the blue cavalier is good. Yeah. I don't I don't know about like with this deck, but just in general, yeah. We played it in the team or extinction deck that we just played a little bit ago. Hey track team day's going really good. We are trying to get this five win league here. We're game three. Five win dream still alive. Crypto Command is too good, as we talked about before, even though I'm announcing the presence of Crypto Command saying that I have it. It's still too good not to hold up. Sure. Yeah, just exile 20 cards. Whatever. You will be haunted. Doubtful. By this duel. Nice Ashiok. <laughs> Alright, we got the Ashiok for a turn. Ugh. Darn it. Give me that scholar. I guess we don't really have a graveyard anyway, though. This Basically, no matter what the card is, I'm keeping it on top. You know, we just want cards in our library. With the Ashiok. Like, putting stuff, something on the bottom doesn't make any sense. So whatever it was, I was going to be putting it on top. Hmm. I could see trophying the Ashiok. Ashiok gets rid of 15 cards. I could also see not doing that as well. I'm not sure. Let's get some more information. They've gotten rid of zero Agent of Treachery so far. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't really want to give them another land with them just sitting on the three lands here. For just three Ashiok activations. We're pretty close to fighting through that anyway. Probably discarding a Blood for Bones here.
Awesome, Orc, thanks. All right, so two ash or two agent of treachery is gone. Two agent of treachery is gone. Right? Is it just one? What was two? One, two. Yeah, okay, there's two. Two are gone. What they shock for? See if I just led with thought erasure. I would have just played Thought Erasure first, then my opponent would have killed the 1 3. So, like, it's not like Thought Erasure, you know, Thought Erasure is a sorcery speed spell. They can just respond to it. Um, so, just kind of waiting gave us more information on everything. Um, uh, I guess I'll let, let that happen. I could, you know, I could trophy the, the Drowned Catacomb in response if I don't want them to take trophy, or like if I think they're going to take trophy, but. I don't think they're taking trophy. It's not the best auto tap for him. Karn only grabs artifacts from exile, so Karn. So no, Karn wouldn't wouldn't be a, a good option against Ashiok. Karn doesn't just get any card from exile for you. Ugh. I guess we finished our final boss playlist. It went through everything. We'll just go back to the normal playlist. All right, just going to veil this. Five, one. We did it. Five win, dream. Time to set some alive fire. and well. There we go. Why not agent their lands? Because, I mean, we'd take one land. So it's not like we had to take all of their lands. We would take one land. One land on our side isn't really valuable. Them going from five to four. Could kind of be valuable, but just didn't really need to. Orsian with the cheer. Thank you. All right, so we got the five win league here with... Oh, no, wrong wrong Sultai deck. I pulled up Sultai Treachery because I'm used to playing that deck. Oh, we have to go way down here for Sultai Reanimator because of that Nexus in the sideboard. So I liked our main deck quite a bit. I, you know, it did seem like against, like, that hard control, you know, that game one, we really struggled to win the game. But that was that was because our opponent wasn't playing anything good for us to steal. And so we really struggled with winning before decking. But we did it. So we did it. Um, 
Ashiok, I mean, Ashiok's like kind of a nuisance. You know, Ashiok just like exiles 15, 20 cards. But it's not, Ashiok's not that special because like that's that's all Ashiok does. It doesn't like help you win or anything. So, um, hey, yeah, good games there, UGA. So I don't think we need any like specific card for Ashiok. Every time our opponent played Ashiok against us, we won. What's up, Rad the Reptile? Thanks so much for that. Twitch Prime sub there. We did lose to the combo deck. Which, you know, we could have a little bit more against combo. You know, just one on Mordigo is really low numbers-wise. Um, could have, like, counter magic. Like, maybe we want, like, negates instead of duresses. For example, like, where negate could counter Veil of Summer to help our Agent of Treachery get, get through. You know, like, we... That, like, Veil of Summer was a really difficult card for us to deal with because all we have are Discard and Agent of Treachery. And Veil of, you know, like, that doesn't stop Veil of Summer. So maybe we want, like, Negates instead of Duress, where we can negate to stop Veil of Summer. Um, that could be a thing. The, yeah, the Journey to Eternity and the River's Rebuke and... Like the, those two cards don't don't really seem necessary at all in the sideboard. They're both pretty cool, but well, Rivers Rebukes, whatever. But Journey to Eternity is pretty cool. But neither of those cards seemed like anything I really wanted ever. Um. Yeah, quasi duplicates. Like fine. I don't know if it's necessary in the sideboard either, though. Um, we didn't really get to play against any aggro. So I'm not sure if we need more, but um, if we wanted to get a couple counter spells, like negate is good against mono red as well. And so maybe that's what we want instead of like the journey and rivers rebuke. Maybe we want a couple negates to fight our opponents veil of summer um, and also um, count you know help against uh, combo decks and everything like that. But pretty pretty fun deck. You know, just getting back Agent of Treachery. Like, Blood for Bones, Agent of Treachery is a really, really strong combination, as we saw in those games. Um, good question. Are there other Silver Bullet reanimate targets in Standard that you would want? I would have to... Uh, nothing, like, comes to mind to really think about it. I'm... I'm not sure if we want like a hostage taker against aggro to just kind of be like an agent of treachery that's a little faster like instead of like one of these maybe we want like a, host a hostage taker um you know there's all there's always like plague mare and chupacabra and stuff like that as far as like really big effects not really the skull i did kind of like the i mean skull of the ages is pretty good against control but it, that also may not really be necessary um yeah dracu seth you dracu seth wouldn't really work in this deck very well like you you need uh bond or revival for dracu seth to give dracu seth haste um don't really want it with with just blood for bones um why not burning sun's avatar because so, like, while we do have, like, the reanimate cards in our deck, we only have four cards that actually reanimate. Like, really, the, the strength of this deck is we're just a soul tie mid-range deck that just has, like, Blood for Bones for value for the most part. So, like, the deck's not really focused on, like, trying to Blood for Bones all the time. Um, maybe it is a little bit, but I, you know, I cast, like, one or less Blood for Bones a game. Like, I would say, like, if I had to guess, like, how many Blood for Bones I cast, I probably, like, I would say I probably cast, like, one per game. Like on average, there was games that weren't that didn't cast them at all. Some games I cast two, but so basically, I, I don't think I don't think you really want to uh, throw cards like Burning Sun's Avatar and just throw throw cards like that that you can't cast uh, without without just like playing your normal game here. No, there are no cycling lands in standard. No. Um, but there we go. So, so yeah, like Foxtrot, did you have any other questions about your deck here also? But, uh, but anyway, uh, I'll answer that if so, but that's, 
Sultai Reanimator. So if you're watching later on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe buttons over there, leave some comments. Also, this real this the one of re reassembling skeleton was really cool. I really liked one of those. Um, I liked that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, make sure yeah do all that kind of stuff on YouTube. But thank you so much for watching Sultai Reanimator, and I'll see you for the next video.